Hello, uh, let's keep working with the first tutorial. So in the website, I just unload the links and few instructions. So if you want to go for, for, for the whole uh, case setup using Ansys Workbench workflow, you have the link here to channel YouTube. So you want to do it directly in Fluent, this is what, what we're going to do. I'm going to show you a few instructions how to do since here. Link here and here you can download the, the file. So have in mind that the ANSYS Workbench project is only compatible with the version 2020. If you have an older version, it won't work. So you can take the Fluent case files and work with those. So it was compa compatible with 2019, I think with all there as well. So I will show you how to set up a case in Fluent, direct in Fluent. So what is important is that now I think you have this case file and as you go inside i already opened the case here so see that when you work in the workbench it will save a lot of files like mesh enhances measure geometry a lot of restarting files interpolation files so sometimes you need to have all those files especially if you're working with large cases it will save a lot of stuff but it's the one you can keep working like that okay but I will show you how to directly get the mesh. So as you do your, your whole mesh, you know here, you click here, you know that you have the mesh in this location. You just copy and then we're working, we're going to work with that. Uh, by the way, here in view, you, you can access more options. So you see files. So if you don't see that one, just click here. So let's say that we generate the mesh. So I will erase this. Okay, let me raise this one and show you. So at this point, as I erase this, see that I don't have the fluid mesh. I just, just have my project, a very clean project. So this is a geometry mesh. So remember that now we need to convert it to, to, to fluent. So just drag and drop here. And it will convert the mesh to, uh, to fluent format. That is the .nsh format. Okay, so we're going to see that here. So remember, always when you see the light in here, right click and then you will update. So here we're just converting from this format to Fluent. Okay, so now we have the mesh. See that is automatically added here. This is the format. So you can save it here. You can close this. Okay, I will close it. We're not going to work directly here. I won't go into work influence. So you see here that you have your, your directory structure. So as you enter here, see that you have, this is since that where you're putting additional files, but you go DP0 and sys, meg, and here you have your mesh, okay? Again, you will have your geometry here at the end. So according to what you do, you, you will have more files. So I already copied the mesh, okay? So you can download the mesh. See here that we have the, I changed the name mesh, that msh also have a preset up predefined case so at this point what we need to do is just launch fluent and open this file so you can put this file whatever you want so here in this case i just copy this in my desktop so let's launch fluent and open this file okay i launched fluent okay so here we need to set up the as we did in the previous video the, the we need to set up what we want to do Okay, and the working directory in this case that is not within the workbench. So remember, we're going to work in the 2D case. So here they mentioned 2D, always set here double precision, okay, and then the number of processors. So in my case, I have four, as you can set up according to what you have. Also, so you have GPU, you can put it there. In this case, I, I'm not going to use it. And here you have the working directory. So in my case, I put my files in the desktop. Okay, in this directory, select folder, and now I'm going to work in this one. Then the other tabs here, just leave it the default, okay? And then at this point, just press the start, and we're going to enter Influent, but now outside the, the workbench, okay? This is how I like to, to, to proceed. Okay, finally, Fluent is open, so sometimes it's take a while. So we're here in Fluent. Remember, this is just a warning, okay? Don't pay attention. So I'm working with version 2020 student, but the 2019 also, I think the, 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 the organization, everything is the same, the tabs, everything. So as you go here, file, 
read so i want to read a mesh okay so you can read also the case the case is exactly the same but it is the mesh with all the setup so we go to a clean mesh okay we need to set up everything you see here that you can read the mesh okay sometimes dependent what you have can take a while so let's wait a little bit here And voila, we're doing. So you see here that it read the mesh, give you uh, some basic information. Then you want to visualize the mesh here, graphics, mesh, display. Okay, so this is our mesh. Okay. And a few things that, for instance, you want to check your mesh quality. Here you have in the domain quality, evaluate mesh quality. And here you have your mesh quality. When it comes to mesh quality, look at minimum orthogonality quality. A very good mesh, mesh, this value. This is a perfect mesh, by the way, it's one. So a good mesh, this value should be more than 0 0.1. Probably you can push up to 0 0.01 okay but usually i will give you mesh meshes with good quality then you want to check your size your number of cells here info size see here that you have 140 000, uh cells okay and then also you want to check your dimensions here you have a scale and see here that you have x and y so if you want to scale this one to convert, convert from one unit to the other you can do it here so here we read the mesh and at this point we just need to set up the case as we did within the workbench okay the advantage here is that we are outside that workbench we're not saving all the, those files so remember always a good idea save your file so we read it now you go right case i will call it test so one thing that this is version 2020 they introduced this format that is i think it's faster and it's smaller than the original uh, native format of fluence so it's up to you to choose the, the, this format but i think in, in version 19 probably won't open i don't recall so i will give you the files in the native format so i will go here case see and then you give it a name okay test write binary files so usually binary files are smaller and faster and okay so as you go to here see that you have the file here test okay it's save it with extension a5 okay let me rewrite again case i want to save it like this i don't want this extension okay See, it gives you a warning telling you that this is a new format so my advice is always uh, use this new format, but in this case, I will save it in the old one just for compatibility issues if somebody has version 2 uh, 2019. Okay, so we save it and now we start to do the case setup. So remember, I like to use the vertical approach here, workflow, but also you can do it in the ribbon. Now, let me go general. So pressure basis, the steady, planner, so models. See now default. It is K Omega for those working with 2018. The default is laminar, but now they are giving you this default. Leave the default options. Then we're working. We're going to work on this. I don't have any more models. Material. We go to our working material. So it is incompressible flow. So we can play with these properties. And I will put here. Tun, 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 tun. Okay. So this will give me the range of 100,000. Close then boundary conditions so remember at machine time okay sorry uh operating conditions here you click here you set your reference pressure okay so in compressors flows this will be a constant and then boundary condition remember when you generate uh, generated the mesh you, you set up all these names so inlet it's a velocity inlet okay and i will set this value to one here intensity hydraulic so i will put it low intensity and my di diameter is this one okay so if you want you can use the auction uh if you know your values if you compute your values you know that we have this small program that we did with the lecture for uh turbulence estimate so if you have good uh, estimate you can put it here okay it's up to you or you can let fluent to compute it i will use this okay then for the outlet pretty much it's a pressure outlet let the flow go out and i will choose same values one zero point zero five uh zero one sorry this is the diameter zero okay i fix my pressure at the outlet 
then symmetry i think it's already a symmetry okay so you see that click there it was it's a symmetry so one, one thing that flew in it will automatically uh, set up your boundary conditions according to the name so as you put inlet it will know that it's a velocity inlet as you put outlet it will know that it's a pressure outlet as you put symmetry we know it's a symmetry if you put a different name i think we would choose the default value which is a wall but again you can change your definition here okay so the wall is a wall and we are set here so I, we don't need to set anything here okay this is more advanced action now we go to methods so this is the default methods that fluin is, is telling you to use so it's this is a very robust method very fast very good for steady flows steady solutions okay so in the world fluent case we use simple in this case let's use couple couple yeah, this one you will see that it's much, much faster, but as you monitor memory, you will realize that it uses more memory. So remember, the roll of time is like 1 million cells. It is about 1 gig of memory. And as you are using the couple solver, multiply that by about 3 or 4. Okay. So let's use this one. This is 2D. There is no problem. Okay, let's go and choose also for turbulence quantity second order win. Okay, we want a second order method to approximate those new equations. Okay, this is our closure equation for the model. Remember, compulsory momentum have to be second order. The rest can be first order. There is no problem. Okay, and then control. This is our some advanced features. Leave it as they are. They are okay then probably we're going to wear a little bit more on those features in another tutorial uh report definitions here you set up your monitor so let's add the mass flows monitor so mass flow rate we want to complete inlet and outlet give it a new name we call it mass flow report plot you can report to a file so it will save the, the old uh, text file in your in your uh working directory so i will set up in this case to show you mass flow okay and then set up another one to compute the maximum or the average y plus value so i will choose facet average okay and then give it an a average use i want just to save the plot and i want to compute it at the walls okay so now remember to choose your quantity so here is y plus Okay, there are two quantities, y star, y plus, later we're going to, to talk about that, but let's say the equilibrium flows, those are very, much, very, 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 very similar. Okay, so you have your monitors, just see here that you have it. Residuals use the default values, these are okay. And now we're done. Cell register, we don't need to do anything. And then standard initialization, compute value from inlet, so you will set up what you, whatever you have in your inlet, you will set up that in your whole domain. So you have more complicated initializations. You can have non-uniform initializations, everything. So those are more uh, advanced actions. So initialize. And we have it. So at this point, we are ready to go. Then you have also cal calculation activities. This is probably useful when you're run running on a steady. So you can say here, save the simulation every top iterations. Okay, so as you put here, 100 it will save the simulation every 100 iterations so you go edit then you can say just retain the most i will say two recent files and this is the the location where you're saving that okay and you give it a name so i will erase this i will, will give it a run running this will be the name it will save everything in my working directory so you don't need to give the path by the way okay so basically you're saving every 100 iteration Okay, it's, give it this name, and then it will save only, it will keep only the two most recent files. Okay, remember every now and then save. So now we can save the case and the data. We can, because also we have data which is the initial condition. So let's save everything. So I will use the H5 format in this case. So we have everything there. So if you want to restart later, you can use it. And at this point, we're ready to go. So wrong calculation, put here 500, okay, which is probably okay. These parameters live as they are, okay. This is related how you do your iterative margin and then press calculate. And we shall be ready here. So see that 
this will realize that this is much much faster than the the previous one as you can if you want to do some timing but it will use more memory so let's wait for the solution so see mass flow red at the beginning is oscillator so remember don't pay attention to this one so this one sometimes can be mis mis misleading okay it's better to, to monitor some integral quantities in this case mass flow when it comes stable you know that you my maybe you reach that steady condition steady state but see here that is you stop here probably it's not a good idea because still it is oscillating we know that the method is conservative so it should be what it what is going in is going out see here that you are reporting that quantity as well and as you look at your working directory you see that here you have the default also i save it so if you open that one in my case i use a sublime text text so i recommend you also to use a decent text editor do not use the notepad that is really bad so sublime text is a good one then you have also notepad plus plus so see here that you have all this date all this data so then you can plot it using whatever you use matlab python in my case i will use python so you see that now it reached convert solution you see that it was much much faster than using the simple that if, if i were record it was about 600 iteration okay probably you might say it's better to iterate a little bit more because you are not sure if this is already stable so if you want to keep iterating a little bit more change the, your your convergence criteria so as you go back to residual just reduce this one and say 0 0.5 okay so now just this one the continuity which is related to pressure is the one that it will keep iterating until reaching that quantity see here that reach that value re relative fast and let's say that well let's put 0 0.1 okay and it keeps iterating up to reaching that value okay and also you can completely disable these monitors okay if you want i will show you how to do it so so see that this one now at this point we can say pretty much this is very 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 stable see that the value is very low so if you want to re re disable the the residuals then you will come you will iterate up to the maximum number of iterations you go here and check convergence so you just uncheck this one and now you are not checking the, the convergence so if you calculate you see that you will keep iterating up to the maximum number stop and at this point we have a solution so contours you can plot here your static pressure so there is a pressure drop so there is a correlation that it will let you let you know the pressure drop so remember that from from fluid mechanics velocity so see that we are resolving here the boundary layer then we can check for instance some turbulence quantity so for instance we can check k okay so see here we have the k value okay so at the wall in the viscous layer is zero we know that there we don't have fluctuations and then you go to a buffer layer that probably is this one and then you will have fluctuations there okay and that's all so also if you want to do the sampling you can go here report uh, sorry is plots okay xy plot and then I want to do a sampling at the outlet and I want to do a sample of velocity. Okay, velocity magnitude. So that one will be plotted in the y direction. Okay, save plot and then you have it. So if you want to save this file into a text file, you go here, write to file, recommend you to choose order point, it will order everything. Write, give it a name, I will call it bell out. And now as you go to the back to your case directory, you have it there, you open it. And then you have your position, okay? And then the velocity value. Okay, so from the wall up to the core to the center. Then you can just compare with correlations you have correlations. And uh, think that is all for this case. Uh, also, you can have your vectors just to show you. Okay, you put it there and you have your velocities, velocity vectors. So that's all. I hope uh, 
I had Reyes everything. So you, it's up to you. It's up to you to choose how you want to work. If you want to work in the workbench. It's okay. If you want to work outside the workbench, this is how you work. Okay. So most of the time, I do it out, out of the workbench. I use the workbench just to generate the, the, the mesh. See here that also save the mesh. Okay. The automatic free frequency I gave it. Okay, and most of the time I will work direct in Fluent, so I will give you meshes. Sometimes we're going to generate geometry mesh, so we need to go to the workbench. So that's all. Thank you very much for following, and see you next time. Bye.